Welcome to Incognito Islamic Productions. The truth about the killing of Um Qirfa. The way the story of the killing of Um Qirfa is presented by anti-Islamic polemicists is a perfect example of how they twist the facts. Let us first tell you the twisted story. They give an impression as if she was a noble lady of great character and Muslims for no valid reason attacked her tribe and her killing in that specific manner of tying her legs to two camels and driving them away and thus tearing her apart was carried out on by the command of the Holy Prophet wasallam himself. They also allege that her head was brought to the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and he ordered it to be paraded in Medina. Then they try to make an issue about her daughter who was taken as a prisoner and later gave birth to a child of Hazan bin Abu Wahab. They tend to convey as if she was raped. Indeed, nothing can be far from truth than this twisted story. Secondly, there are some issues with the narration. Let us say that, that there is some confusion as to when was Um Qirfa killed and who led the campaign against her violent tribe. According to Bayhaqi's Sunan al-Kubra and according to Ad-Dara Qutni's Sunan Dar Qutni, she was killed during the Caliphate of Abu Bakr عنه, while most of the books on Sirah put it somewhere in the 6th Hijri. Further, according to Sahih Muslim, Abu Bakr عنه, led the campaign during the lifetime of the Holy Prophet وسلم, but accounts in the book of Sirah give the notion as if Zayd bin Haritha عنه, was the leader. Polemicists, mostly Christians, generally refer to the books of Sirah, so we shall reply considering those particular narrations. The true story in full. Here we give the full account as to what actually happened. Reading the accounts of the event given in both Sirah ibn Hisham and Tabaqat of ibn Sa'ad help us understand the story better. Point number one. Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anhu went on a trading journey to Syria and with him was the merchandise for companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. While he was near Wadi Al Qura, he encountered people from the tribe of Badr of Fazara, whose leader was Um Qirfa. They attacked him and his companions and snatched all they had of merchandise. Point number two Some of his fellows were killed, and he himself was carried wounded from the field. Zayd vowed that he would not wash his head for ritual purity until he fought the people of Fazara. Point number three, when he recovered from his wounds, the Holy Prophet وسلم, sent him to punish the treacherous people and ordered them to move by the night and rest by the day as a stratagem. Point number four, Zayd radiallahu anhu went and fought the Fazara in Wadi Al-Qura, killed some of them. Qais ibn Musahar killed Masada bin Hakama. Um Qirfa, her daughter, and Abdullah ibn Masada were taken as prisoners. Zayd ordered Qais ibn Musahara to kill Um Qirfa, and Qais killed her by putting a rope in her two legs, tying it to two camels, and driving them in opposite direction until she was killed, ripped apart. In Sirah Halabiya, another source they cite on this issue, it is clearly stated, and I quote, Zayd ibn Haritha went on a trading expedition towards Syria and with him was the merchandise for the companions of the Holy Prophet While he was near Wad al-Qura, he met a party from the tribe of Fazara of Banu Badr. They attacked him and his companions and snatched all that was with them of merchandise. Point number five. Further, we learn that Um Qirfa, in her capacity of being the tribal leader, plotted to harm the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in person. This is mentioned in, in Al Rahiq Al Maktoum, page 457. In Sirah Al Halabiya, it is stated that Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anhu 
ordered the killing of Umm Qirfa for she used to revile the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and because she had prepared 30 riders from amongst her children and grandchildren and had asked them to attack Medina and kill Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now this clarifies certain points. Number one, it was the tribe of Fazara which was headed by Umm Qirfa who first attacked Muslims who were merely on trading journey. Point number two, they killed Muslims and took their merchandise. Point number three, Muslims made a counter-attack to punish the trigger-happy tribe. Point number four, there is no authentic report whether the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered her killing specifically. In fact, it was Zayd bin Haritha radiallahu an who ordered her killing as she was being the leader of the tribe responsible for all that happened. And we just read Zayd radiallahu anhu himself had seen their aggression and merely survived it. Point number five, her killing was perfectly justified as she led her tribe to commit violence against Muslims. She was no innocent woman and was rather a hostile enemy. Point number six, the manner she was killed was not ordained by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam but was carried on by the people who had undergone the terror practiced by her men. It was a reaction by such people. It is Umm Qirfa herself who is to be held responsible for such a reaction. Point number seven, no authentic report makes any mention of her head being brought to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then paraded in the streets of Medina. This is a myth and a lie. The books these slanders produce as a reference are no authority as they are not written by trustworthy people and no authentic report in any of the classical books gives even a hint to such a happening. Point number eight, coming to the daughter of Umm Qirfa, there are two reports and these liars refer to both of them. According to Sahih Muslim, she was given to Salamah bin Al-Aqwa and then Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took her from Salama and she was given as a ransom for Muslim captives in Mecca. While according to Sirah bin Hisham, she was taken from Salama and then given to Hazan bin Abu Wahab and later bore him a son, Abdul Rahman. Point number nine, she was not raped. According to Sahih Muslim, she was first given to Salama radiallahu anh, and he himself reports, and I quote, we arrived in Medina. I had not yet disrobed her when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met me in the street and said, Give me that girl, O Salama. I said, Messenger of Allah, she has fascinated me. I had not yet disrobed her. The next day, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again met me in the street. He said, O Salama, give me that girl. May, may Allah bless your father. I said, She is for you, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By Allah, I have not yet disrobed her. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent her to the people of Mecca and surrendered her as ransom for a number of Muslims who had been kept as prisoners at Mecca. Now one can observe that Salama Radiallahu Anh said that he had not disrobed her when they reached Medina and again when the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met him in the street he told that he had not disrobed her and even the next day after the night having passed when he was again asked for the girl, he testified that he had not yet disrobed her, though she fascinated him. This is enough proof that Salama radiallahu an did not forcefully lay with her as it was against the teachings of Islam. Islam does not allow a man to forcefully have sexual intercourse with his slave woman. Otherwise, no one could stop Salama from sleeping with a slave girl who fascinated him. And if she later bore Hazan bin Abu Wahab's son, then it must have been by her own consent. We have seen the conduct of pious companion, Salam radiallahu anh, and there is no reason to say that another pious companion, Hazan radiallahu anh, would have violated the Islamic injunction and forced the daughter of Umm Qirfa into the intimate relation. Let me turn the tables now. Indiscriminate killing of women and children. In 1 Samuel 15, 3, it says, Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman 
infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Agreed that the Amalekites were accused of being violent to Israel on their way out of Egypt. But did Fazara, the tribe led by Um Qirfa, not do the same to Muslims who were merely on trading journey? But still there is a difference. Muslims killed only those who fought and plotted against Muslims and even the Holy Prophet وسلم, in person. But why did the loving Father in the heavens above order the indiscriminate killing of men and women and even infants? Why infant and the suckling? No devil or saint can help the Christians come up with a justification for such cruelty. Keep virgin women for yourselves. Bible puts the following words into the mouth of Musa alayhi salam alleging that he was inspired by God in the book of Numbers 31 17 to 18 it says therefore kill all that are of the male sex even of the children and put to death the women that have carnally known men but the girls and all the women that are virgins say for yourselves again why kill children were they also accused of deceiving the people of Israel why kill even the little ones for your weakness of faith? Even the learned men of Christianity find no way to justify this barbarism attributed to holy men. Adam Clark in his commentary to this verse says, The little ones were safely lodged. They were taken to heaven and saved from, the, from evil to come. What a justification! Reasoning and rationality can only mourn at it. But all the girls and all the women that are virgins safe for yourselves, says the Bible attributing it to Moses. What for? Were the virgin women not accused of deceiving the Israel while even the children were? I need not say that as you, the person watching, can easily sense what the reason can be. And I urge you to give a verdict if it suits these slandering Christians to speak about Islam. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum.